I wrote a book called How to Inherit the Earth. That wasn't my title. That was uh, University Press's title. I said, I really want to call it Leadership Schmeadership. Because I feel like we live in this culture that so enshrines leadership as the ultimate goal. Christian leadership. You know, you do a, a Google search for leader and you get all of these, even in christianbooks.com, get all these books on leadership. You do a search on follower and you get this minuscule amount. Uh, I think humility is essentially embracing that position of being a follower, being someone who's uh, eager to serve, eager to sort of be in that position where they're contributing in some obscure way. We don't celebrate obscurity in the ways that I think Jesus did. Uh, I don't think he was nearly as obsessed with leadership as we are. He was more obsessed with calling people to follow. In fact, you do a search in the Gospels for leader versus follow, uh, and you'll find, I think it's four to one, follow over lead. You know, he, he does use the word lead. The blind lead the blind, for instance. He uses leadership in that sense. The leaders of the, of the Gentiles lord it over. You know, the synagogue leaders, you know, the, the leader, when it shows up in the Gospels, is often a very negative context, servant, follower, those sorts of things are lifted up in an exalted place. And I think we've got that reversed in many of our cultures. I don't think we celebrate following and obscurity in the ways that we're meant to, to be that invisible person. You know, yeast, it's this little thing that just dissolves in this massive flour dough mud mixture and it gives itself, and no one really sees the yeast. No one really credits the yeast. All we know is we get this beautiful bread uh, as the yeast sort of dissolves into this mass. It transforms the mass into life-giving bread. That obscurity of yeast, the near invisibility of the mustard seed, those are the pictures that Jesus holds up for us as models. Mm -hmm.